Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. We give God thanks for another moment, another hour, another time. And what a privilege that we can say, and are we yet alive to see each other's face? Glory and praise to Jesus' name. And I say to you, this is all because of his redeeming grace. And let us work, let us look at the word redeeming grace. To redeem here means to buy back. To redeem here means to reclaim. To take back that which belongs to you. Or that which was stolen from you. And this is what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came doing. Redeeming humanity. Who was deceived by that enemy who were told a simple lie that you shall not die but you shall become wise as God you shall become gods and today as we look carefully what we are seeing is men are seeking power men are going to the extreme to achieve the things that we would all die and leave, regardless of how much you acquire upon the face of this earth. We are all going to die, and we are all going to leave it. So never mind how greedy, or I mean, never forget the times that we are in, La Adosia. And this is the period of greed, where men are just going after things. And we have to be very careful as we walk this journey to understand where we are and where we are going and what we are doing and why. So let us prepare for that journey. And tonight, as we look carefully into the lesson, I want you to, to really observe something. You know, I think we, we override the power of resurrection. I'm going to be sitting tonight to speak with you. We overlook the power of resurrection, never understanding how powerful that really is in our life, was and is in our lives. And you will see how much it confused those who were even bringing the messages of faith to tell us that there is a child that is going to be born and his name will be called Emmanuel. And the weight of the world will be upon his shoulders. I don't think Isaiah understood the fullness of that. But even in the death of Christ upon the cross, he created a scene that some of us still do not understand. Being the first fruit of them that live. And it's telling us here, that if they had come out before him, then he would not have been the first fruit. But he had to be the first fruit of the spiritual life. Then they were able to come out and also live the first fruit of that spiritual life. And as we were taught by the prophets of old, so we are going to be taught by these who came out after Christ. And remember what he said. They, were, they appeared unto many. They were not seen by many. They appeared unto many in like manner as Jesus walking the face of the earth for that 40 days after his death, burial, and resurrection, appearing unto his disciples, vanishing from his disciples when he realized that they are getting too close to him for reasons that they would learn and that they would understand and that they would come to realize that these are the things he was saying to us. So as we look carefully into the lessons that we are doing, do not get weary and believe that we are staying too long on a lesson because this is going to this is what we have to learn. It needs to open up our hearts and minds. And this is why he had to make that 40 days sacrifice. And as the scripture says, to teach them to open their heart, to open their eyes, to open their minds. 
Some of us still do not understand what he was saying to us and what he is saying to us. So I am calling out to you tonight. As we go back into this lesson, you would observe the headline, the continuation of the two Advent. Let us ask God for guidance. Let us ask him to enlighten our hearts and give us the opportunity to understand what he is saying to us. Almighty and most merciful Jesus, I am giving you thanks for the wonderful opportunity and privilege that you have blessed us with. That we can come in thy presence at this time and hour. And that we can make known unto you our needs, our desires. And we can ask you to increase our faith. As that, that man that you were speaking to and he said, Lord, increase my faith. So tonight I'm calling out to you and I'm asking that you would increase our faith and that you would help us to go from strength to strength. That we will be able to share the glory, the glory, the joys, and all that you have for us to walk according to your will. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you honor and we give you glory. And again, I'm saying thank you, Jesus, for the wonderful privilege that you have given me so that I can come here tonight. So tonight, church, as we spoke of the two Advent. We speak of that time of the ushering in of our Lord and Savior. Again, the prophet Isaiah speaking of that child that is going to be born. A virgin shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. However we want to put it, thou shalt call his name Yeshua. Sometimes we take these little things and we make a big issue of it. But what, what is comfortable for you? Walk with it as long as it's pertaining to the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's a God of many names. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Rapha, and you can go on. Over 70 names he carries. So let us not make an issue of how someone would mention or speak about him. There are different languages, but it all means the same, our Lord and Savior. And as we give on to him again, so we speak here of that one who is about to come. And what I like about that is how it's mentioned in the word. It didn't tell you, you know, even though it, when the angel Gabriel began to speak unto Mary, and the angel Gabriel began to share with Mary the magnificence, the things that is to come, the things that would happen to her, when she asked the question, how can this be? How can this be? It wasn't like, like Zacharias. I want to share this with you. It wasn't like Zacharias who doubted. And this is why you would find to every time I speak with you, I, you know, when we walk in this spiritual path, we have to be able to ask questions. We didn't doubt as Zacharias doubted. And because he doubted, he was Dumb, he was made dumb for how many years, for how many, until the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And until the birth of John. He was not able to speak until John was brought within the house. And if he called his name John, that's the moment that he began to speak. But when the angel Gabriel spake unto Mary, pertaining to the things that should be, and that will happen. I want to read those verses for you. And that I'm not sending you there. It's the first chapter of Luke. I'm going to read from the 31st verse. You know, I'm saying to you, and I will always say, we need to be equipped. I don't need to come here and just tell you stories and, and things to make you feel good. I would like you to be able to go back into the Word and research the Word and gain some understanding. May I say it like this? You know, we did not have teachers who would have taught teach us in this manner. I did not grow up with this, with this privilege in so many ways. Yet the men that I sat under, they did their best to share with us. And they shared to the best of their ability. And I've heard so many speak, so many speak, you know, well, I didn't know this, and I did simple things in the scriptures. 
So this is making me go back and to share with you so that you would see. I'm not just telling you something that I have heard. Because I want you to be able to go back to the word and tell somebody, thus say it the Lord. So as we look here, I'm going to read from the 30th verse of the first chapter of Luke. And he says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor. We're speaking of the two advent. And I'm going to go into the, to the last advent, which is the millennial period when he is going to come. But I want you to get this clear in your mind, because there is so much here for us to know. Thou hast found favor with God. I want you to be able to say this, that you know, in those days, in the days of the Hebrews, when they were looking for the Messiah, we're not here speaking of the Israelites, because the Israelites came in long after. You see, the Israelites came in through Jacob. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. So we must understand this. So don't get tied up with it. I'm saying the Hebrew. The children of Abraham. Not the children of Jacob. And he said, thou hast found favor. They were all looking for the Messiah because the prophets were prophesying unto them and telling them how sweet the name, you know, a Messiah will come. But they were looking for someone to come on six black horses to defend them from Rome, from the Gentiles. This is not what God had in mind for his son. So as we begin here, thou hast found favor. What I'm trying to say to you is every family or every household with a young maiden would be so watchful of that maiden until she turned into womanhood. When she turned into womanhood, okay. Then she can marry or go and live her life. But everyone was hoping that my daughter is going to be the one to bring forth the Messiah into the world. And this is where Mary was found. Even though being espoused. When, when we, you know, these are nice things for us to know. When we speak of being espoused, it comes like you are married. But yet still, you will not. That woman will not be living with you until the day of the, the marriage. You espouse, that's your wife, yes. But she is staying at her parents' home. And within this period and time, God was so unique. He wanted, listen, today we have so many young men and young women growing up without a father in the home, not knowing who their father is and, and all the rest of it. And, you know, we, we're doing all manner of things. We just heard of a young man who don't want to take his responsibility, invite his, his baby mother to go out with him, shoot her in the head and throw the baby in the, in the, in the river. Come on. This is where we are. This is how cold life has Bigger, become. And we have to be very careful. But God wanted someone as a figurehead that our Lord will grow up with seeing. And most of all, he sought a carpenter. He sought a builder. He didn't seek for an engineer. He didn't seek for an astronaut. He sought for a builder. And the art of building is creating things and preparing places for, for us to live and, you know, bringing comfort in our lives. You know, the more I think about it, and, the, and I thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing and how you do it. Church, I want you to build on it also. I want you to get this. And behold, the 31st verse, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. In Isaiah 7, it say, 7 and 14, it says Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the thrones of his father David. You would observe, with all of this that is being said, preparing for the advent or the coming, according to John 3 and 13, 
There's no one that ever went up to heaven except he that came down. And this is what we saw in the, in the, you know, after the crucifixion and the resurrection, we saw him ascend. So we know he is the one, the Messiah, the true Son of God. So as we see this here, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Meaning here you're coming to the lineage of David. The promise that was made unto David that no one will take your throne, but you will. Your throne will, be, will remain. Someone from your lineage will sit on that throne continually. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever children of Israel and of his kingdom there shall be no end you would observe here I want you to see this in all of this Mary stood quiet and listening and asking the question what is this man talking about and I imagine going through her mind the very question you would see that she asked here you know how can all this be you know how can, so shall this be, seeing I know not a man? So you know that, I repeat, you don't just stand there and you are told X, Y, and Z and you never ask the question why, where, how, when. You need to ask these questions and this is what makes us even more spiritually ready and equipped. So that we can face that which is before us. Now the angel is going to share something that if you and I are really looking into this, we are going to get a, a, a real good understanding of how God moves in life. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And I want you to meditate upon this. That holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That holy thing that shall be born of thee. You know, if this book could have been <laughs> desecrated, it would have been. But there are things here that is pointing out to the awesomeness of God. The omnipotency of God. That no one could do what he had done. That holy thing. It wasn't of the seed of, the, of, of Joseph. It was the power of the Most High himself implanting into that womb his son. Spirit. Into the womb. To take on the shape and form of humanity. To cry to Mary for food and to, to grow up feeling our pains, bearing our burdens, carrying our sins. The chastisement of our sins was upon him. The crown of thorns, again fulfilling that first advent purpose. He fulfilled that and he fulfilled it with grace. He fulfilled it honorably. He fulfilled it with the love of God. And this is why here, as we observe after that 40 days, and was ascending, I say, and was ascending up into heaven, as he mentioned in John 3 and 13, no man ever came down, or no man ever went up to heaven, except he that came down from heaven. You hear this? except he that came down from heaven and was placed in the womb of a virgin, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. Hard to believe. What are you saying? How can this dead man take up his body, take, I mean, become alive? And when we went into the tomb, we saw the, the linen cloth and we saw all the, the dead clothes right there as though nothing happened. How did he come out of that mystery? And when we begin to understand this, you would see here now, 
And as he continued, I'm back into our lesson. And again, I would focus on the 11th verse, but I like to read 9, 10, and 11. You know, and when he had spoken these things unto them, the 9th verse, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white upper robes, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, this is the second advent we are speaking of here. And this is how powerful this verse of scripture is. If we would take that time to look into it, we would get it. The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come to you in like manner. Shall come to you in like manner. Now I want to share with you today, as we go into this word and we begin to, to minister the word. I'm going back into the Old Testament. To complement this verse of scripture. And hopefully that it will be brought to a greater light and life in our lives. That we will be able to see the goodness of God. And the God who said, I am the one who speaks the end from the beginning. We're going to read that tonight. I'm going to read it from the scriptures to share with you tonight. This is how important this is for us to know. So really, this second advent that, is, that he is going to, we are looking forward to is something that we have to, to really focus on. The prophets and the pastors and the priests of yesteryear, a message here is being given to them, Isaiah 23. If you would go there with me for a minute. Isaiah 23. A message is being spoken unto them. An instruction is hereby given. So we have to be very careful as how we feed the flock of God. But this chapter here is really pointing to the millennial period when Christ will come again and gather his people unto himself. And this also speaks you know, that verse, that, chapter, that verse, the 11th verse of the first chapter of Acts, is also going to send us into the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. You know, we have to understand what God is doing and how he, how he is working with us. And he is showing us what the end will be, even from the very beginning of time. Who can do this? Which one of us here can say what to, the end of tomorrow will bring? This very sad time tomorrow, what is, what is going to happen? Except when we receive a revelation from God. And we are sitting there waiting, hoping, and in our hearts I'm saying, Lord, let this word that you have given unto me be fulfilled. This is how deep it is. And on the, the, listen, the 59th second... Nothing has happened, and on the 60th second, bam! And you know what the relief you get? You can breathe now. Because everybody was watching you to know whether you are telling a lie or not. And this is what is happening here. So when I read this part of the scriptures here to you tonight, and you see what it's saying, as it spoke to them then, it is also speaking to us now. And this is how important this is. And hear what he says from the beginning of this chapter, the 23rd chapter of, I, of Jeremiah. Sorry, I said to you, Isaiah. But we're going to go back to Isaiah because there are some things I want you to see there. Look at what is happening here. He said, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. You know, we begin to treat people like babies. We begin to treat people like they are nothing. We begin to treat people like that. I am God, gift to humanity, and you are nothing. Now I want to remind you here, children, family in the Lord, it is because of this Moses was not able to enter into the promised land. Even though his thoughts were righteous and pure and true, 
But when he called the children of God, ye bunch of reprobates, in anger, and sometimes we stand on the altar and we begin to cast some remarks that breaks down rather than build up. And we say, man can't make a joke. This is no joke. Be careful how you speak to God's children. You know, I grew up in that. And thinking that roughness was the way. Until God said to me, through a messenger, feed my sheep. Don't beat my sheep. Sometimes we stand here and we have to encourage people to do things. Not discourage people from doing things. And this is what is happening here. You're going to see what the second verse is. This is how powerful it is. God is speaking unto the pastors. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Therefore thus said the Lord of God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, against the pastors that feed my people, what are you feeding them with? You're feeding them with your own ideas. You're feeding them the way you feel. You're not feeding them with the things that God, that is convenient for them. You're feeding them with the things that would make them feel good. The itching air is getting a little more itchy. And we begin to walk in this sort of way. And now we begin to see everybody else. And you sitting on a high seat because you know it all. And nobody else knows anything. But we teach, we teach each other. Even from the most dumb or ignorant person, we learn from them. Because sometimes God is going to give us a word through them. So this is why we have to be so careful in what we do and how we do. He said, Whoa, listen, therefore said the Lord God of Israel against the second verse, the pastors that feed my people, it's not that you are not feeding them, but it's what we are feeding them with. Are we feeding them with the things that is truly convenient to them and to bring them to that point that they will understand what God has for them to do? And we know that there are those who, they don't want the truth. Paul asked the question, Peter asked the question, what are you angry with me for? Because I speak the truth. At one point, you would take your eyes out and give it to me, according to Paul. But then, because I speak the truth and I tell you this is not what you're supposed to do, you're angry with me. You walk away from the house of God. But then I don't have a burden to carry. You are going to carry your own burden. But I will have a burden to carry if I fail to speak the truth to you. If I fail to tell you what is right from wrong. And this is what God is saying here. This second verse is powerful. Therefore thus said the Lord, God of Israel, against, and I want you to see this, against the pastors that feed my people, the pastors that feed my people. You know, we have this get-rich scheme. We have this prosperity teaching. And I believe in prosperity because we need to prosper. God is a God of prosperity, but not the way in which it's being taught. And we have to be very careful with that. And this is where the world is going because we are in that time of Laodicea, the time of greed. And we have to be very careful here. Hear what it says. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evils of your doing, said the Lord. You know, sometimes you get so wise that when God tell, give an instruction, you change it. And I heard it happened to me twice. One brother said to me, be it on me. And I'm sad for him today. You're living, yes. I'm sad I feel the burden for him today. 
Because I knew what God was saying to me and I proved it. And he said, no, you can't do that here. Be it on me. That's the worst thing you can do. And I'm glad if you are listening that you would turn your heart and ask God for forgiveness. Because when God gave an instruction, the most important thing is that the individual who received the instruction seek to walk in the instruction if he or she is handed. I'm saying something to you, church. There are times when they are going to tell you, you can't do this and you can't do that. Make sure you have received that instruction from God. But also remember, you don't go in a strong man's house and tell him how weak he is. So if they tell you you can't do this, then I'm saying to you, don't do it. Stand down. But God is going to deal with that situation in his time. In his time. I love you all. And I want you to know what God is doing here. Be careful how you feed my people. He said, be careful how you feed my people. Because I'm going to visit them, behold, I will visit upon them the evil. You know, there are times when the Holy Spirit guiding you, you, you know, and you leave home with pain. I mean, you leave the church in pain because I'm being directed to do certain things and I'm being told, you can't do that here. Did you question what was happening? Did you question why? Church, we need to sit back and really think. But again, God said, I will visit them. But look at what's going to happen. You who have gone through so many great trials and tribulations, hear what he's saying. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whether I have driven them. Now, this is, a, this is another verse of scripture here. That when we begin to sit and really meditate upon it, and this is what we need to do as elders, this is what we need to do as stewards of God. Who are the people that was driven? Who are the people that was scattered? It is only one group of people that was scattered upon the face of the earth, taken from their homeland and ships, and scattered from all, listen, to the four corners of the earth. But that was for a reason. And if you are not opening your mind and your eyes today to accept the fact that the reason why you are scattered and trying to blame everybody else for your error, you have still not yet reached the point whereby you can say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. You have not yet reached that point. So you are prolonging the situation. Rather than looking at all that you didn't get, it's a reason why you didn't get it. And even in the time of oppression and persecution, you are still teaching the world how to cook, how to sew, how to iron, how to do many things, how to breastfeed your babies. You know, all of these things you have taught the world. I want you to understand and <clears throat> we need to start teaching these things. But when we begin to speak on these things, you, you watch me and tell me I'm speaking genealogy. I'm not here to speak no genealogy. Because as we go into the lesson, you will see God's love is for all his creation. All of his creation. All people. You will see that in the lesson also. It's a beautiful thing. He said, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whether I have driven them. Not that they went. The purpose why you were driven there is, a re is you have to understand and you have to accept it. And until we can accept it and say, Lord, have mercy on us, we have not yet reached that point. Don't blame anybody. Let's seek God. And we'll bring them again to their fold. And they shall be fruitful and increase. Let us not prolong the time of suffering. 
Let us not prolong the time of pains and discomfort. But let us come before God and let us acknowledge we have sinned, Father. The oracles that you had given unto us, we desecrated it. The manner in which you have called us, we moved away from it. You know, sometimes I, I stood in a place, we, we, we had a convention, you know, and I stood there. And you're looking at people, looking at others and laughing rather than try. And you know, and they don't know that you've seen them. Remember, this is a spiritual fate. So when you think people are not seeing you, they are seeing you. And I'm looking at them and I'm saying, wow, this is what we have come to. And you not you think it's the babies? No, it's not the little ones. It's those who support are standing in authority. And we need to bring ourselves back, church. This is what this lesson is saying. The second advent, Jesus is coming for a prepared people. And this is what the lesson is sharing with us here. Because he is coming for a prepared people. How prepared would we be? He said, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, said the Lord. Behold, the days cometh, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. I will raise unto David a righteous branch. This righteous branch here is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The pastors, you see, in the, in, according to this lesson here, when we speak of pastors, we speak the three offices of the Old Testament is pastors, prophet, king. Pastors, prophet, pastors, prophet, pr pastors, or prophet, priest, king. Prophet, priest, king. The, the, the prophet here is also a pastor. He is going to be telling you, thus saith the Lord. So the three offices of the Old Testament is prophet, priest, and king. And the only one that fulfilled it perfectly is that which Jesus said, David, a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. I want to read that verse again. Because when we who are called and anointed as pastors and we begin to feed, you know, we feed in on the flock. We no longer feed in the flock, but we are feeding off the flock. And God is displeased with that. And this is why he is, you know, the, the teachings, you making them do things that they ought not to do. And you telling them what not to do. You telling them when to walk and how to walk. The Bible is no longer powerful to guide us. Today, I watched the coronation of King Philip. And you know what smile, what makes me smile? He said, Abide, the, 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 the minister, the ministering servant, he said, the Bible is the law given by us. The law given by the United Kingdom to the world. Not the law given by God, but the law given by your kingdom, O King, that the world should follow. But in this law, in this word, there is so much for you and me. And it just tells you about you. It just tells you about you. Hear what it says in the third verse. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them and will bring them back again to their fold. Think about that verse. Meditate upon that verse and see if you can see yourself there. See if you can see yourself there. He said, and I will set up shepherds that would feed. This is in the millennial period. You know, just as 
Moses were told to set up in groups. We are going to be like this, leaning on the love everlasting, being fed by the God of heaven. Oh, what a blessing. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall, he shall be called the Lord of righteousness. The Lord of oh, righteousness. And this is, we're speaking here, you know, I want to put it like this. When God comes and he stands in that second advent, when he returns to earth, he will be standing on the Mount of Olives. There's a great war that is going to be taking place, a great war of Armageddon. But he is going to be standing on that Mount of Olives, and when he speaks, it will be like thunder. It will be like many waters. But remember, the fire shall not burn thee. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord. That they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whether I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. I want you to think about what we just read here. And when you can understand what we just read here, and the power of what we have just read, you are going to feel proud of yourself, and you are going to be willing to serve God in the beauty and holiness. I want to take a few minutes as we go into the 42nd chapter, the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. Think about what we are doing here. The 43rd chapter of Isaiah. And we have to hustle this because I only have 15 more minutes. But this is where we are. But thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Ye must be born again. Except ye be born of the water and of the spirit, ye cannot see, nor can ye enter into the kingdom of God. What are you saying? You just jump from there to here? Well, this is how we become children of God. This is how we became... The, it, able now to stand in the office wherein we are standing. For I have redeemed thee. In that first advent, and as they are about to leave, he redeemed us with his blood. He shed his blood on Calvary, rugged cross. And I explained to you what it means to redeem, to buy back. To take back that which was stolen from you. And to bring you to that point now, that you can watch the things that were stolen and say, thank you, Lord. For the many years that you've been grieving, for the many years that you wanted something to happen and nothing was happening, here now, you are redeemed. In one of the hymns, it says, redeem, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And then we continue redeem, redeem. It's so beautiful a song. We need to understand this. So when we accept the fact of our redemption, he really says, you know, things are going to happen. He said, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Can we remind ourselves of something that happened like this before? In two occasions, the coming through the Red Sea and the crossing of Jordan. The moment that the children, the Levites were entered the Red Sea. With the Ark of the Covenant. Oh yes. The sea stood still. The water stood still. The water stood still. But what happened? They crossed. 
But what happened to those who were pursuing them? He said, I've given man life for you, O children of Israel. I have given men life. You, this is a beautiful scripture. Let's, let's wait. Let's, let's take time. He said, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Can you remember that? God exercised all of this in our lives. There is not a word in this Bible that is not yet fulfilled and yet to be, be fulfilled. The only thing that is to be fulfilled is what we are preaching here, the millennial period, when Christ is going to come, the ingathering of all the saints. The Feast of Tabernacles. When we will all be together, shall we ever all meet again? On that bright waking up morning. That is what we're speaking of here. In these lessons that I'm bringing forth to you, this is why when we, I headline here the two advents. His ushering into the world. Then he was taken up according to Acts 1 and 11. 1, 9 through 11. And we are told by the two men that stand in white apparels that he is coming again. John the Revelator has brought it to our mind out. He saw the new Jerusalem. He saw a new heaven and a new earth. These things are going to be fulfilled. And we have to start taking these things seriously. Let us forget the prosperity gospel. Because seek ye first. You know, I remember Bishop Bali used to say, and, and like that's all the scripture he used to preach to us. Matthew 6, 32 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all good things shall be added unto you. So when you, all you're doing now is preaching prosperity. Oh, you do this and you get, oh, you do this and we have style, you know, and we're going. Yes, God wants the heart. Seek to know God and what he has for you and the things that he is seeing. He said, when you go through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. They came out of the fire and not even the smell of the fire was upon them. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It had Nebuchadnezzar so, com so confused. When he looked inside, he said, but I throw three, but I'm seeing four. How confusing it will be. And that fourth person looked like the son of God. And you don't believe? We have to believe. We have to know. For I am the Lord thy God. The Holy One of Israel. The third verse. The Savior. I gave Egypt for, my, for thy ransom. I allowed Egypt to die in the ocean. They followed after you. Not knowing who was guiding you. He said Ethiopian Seba. I gave for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather them from the west. And I will say to the south, give up. And I listen, and to the south, keep not back. Are you worried about what we are? And, and listen, don't, don't tell me about this Bible isn't translated. From, it had to be translated. Can you speak Aramaic? Yes, we have weaknesses. They didn't teach us to speak in Aramaic because they figured that we, but we come and we master their very language. This is why I'm saying to you, Sometimes you might see a word, and one word carries so many different meanings. You know, at one time, I, when I listened to the word ignorant, I was looking at a man who was running out his house with a, with, a, with a machete and dragging it on the ground. But after I go into the word and I recognize what ignorant means, ignorant really means not knowing. Unlearned to an extent. So you have to understand all of these things and open your mind. How long will you remain ignorant? 
Ignorance is not just running out your house with a gun and shoot people. It means that you don't even understand the value of life. And how important life is. So we have to seek to bring ourselves to the point that we can truly give God praise. He said, I will say to the north, which angel could stand up and call out to the north and say, give up my children? So I'm saying something to you here. General Mesa of Egypt, when the ship was circling through the, looking for a place for the children that is called Israel today to land. His words were, you cannot, we cannot accept you. It's in the book. He say you leave here black, but you return white. How can we accept you? We have to start thinking. We have to start reading. And all this, I say, far fool that we come on and we do not even understand how to speak to our people. Let us bring ourselves to this so that we can teach, teach people. He said, give up and to the south keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone that is, and this is what I'm saying to you now, I want you to understand the fairness and the love of God. And as long as you reach the point, whether you be Chinese, Greek, whoever, whoever you may be, whatever ethnic grouping you may be, but you must know who you are and don't despise and don't feel left out because of somebody else's prosperity. The time is going to come when they are going to be looking to you for food. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Believe it or not, church, this is what the scripture says. This is what the scripture says. And the daughter, listen, and my daughters from the end of the earth, and everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes. You know, there are those, they have eyes, but they cannot see. The scriptures speak of this. And the deaf who have ears, they have ears, but they cannot hear. And sometimes when we speak of this, it's, it's not just in a literal form. Because there are those who are deaf, naturally deaf. They have the forming of the ears. They have the eyes, but they cannot see. But yet still it have those who have eyes and still cannot see because they cannot accept. The mysteries of God. And when we reach to that point, you know, we find in ourselves in areas here that we need to really do what we have to do. He said, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. And let all the nations gather together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare, let them bring forth their witness that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true ye are my witnesses said the Lord and my servant I have chosen you are my <laughs> listen I want to read that and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe not everybody will and not everybody can believe because he speaks to us in parables. Now it's for us to go to him to get understanding so that we'll be able to share. And understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So we are speaking of a Redeemer. That is about to come. A redeemer. I want to listen. I want to give you something here before we close. Isaiah 46 and 10. I want you to see this. I want you to know who God is. I'm going to read from the ninth verse. Isaiah 46. The ninth verse. 
He said, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Observe. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. Oh, what a thing. And we're speaking here of that day of Armageddon. We're speaking here of that second advent when Christ is going to stand on the, on the Mount of Olives. Hear what he's saying. Calling the raven bird from the east. That man, listen, calling the raven bird from the east. The man that executed my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. I come before you to share the righteousness of God. And to tell you how sweet the name of Jesus is. So that we would be able to, to, to know God. That we would be able to find him. We would be able to walk with him. We would be able to share the good things. The question, there's a question here in this lesson. To whom will you lighten me? And make me equal. The sixth verse. The fifth verse rather. To whom will you lighten me and make me equal and compare me that he may be like? They lavish, they lavish gold out of bags and weigh silver in the balance and hire goldsmith and he maketh it a god and they fall down. Yeah. They fall down. Yeah. And they worship their riches, they worship their gold, they worship their prosperity, they worship all the things that they have in this world. And every, every word that they speak is transactional. They will not do anything to help you. If they should give this to you, they're looking for something in return because they have already seen what they want. Let us stop being transactional, but let us be responsive, let us be submissive, let us be able to be used by God. Gone are the days when all we seek after is the things of this world. But I remind you this evening, what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? So we have to prepare ourselves and seek to walk in righteousness and in love one with the other. You know, there are many things that could be said. And sometimes, we as pastors, we have to be so careful because sometimes, you know, you hurt. The things that cause you to, to hurt, the enemy has a way of bringing it into your mind that you have to be careful what you see. Feed the flock. Feed them with the righteous things of God. And let them grow in grace. Don't be angry. Don't do like Moses. That you were not able to, to enter into the promised land. He begged. But God is firm. And because his firmness stands for righteousness. He said I will no longer have that conversation with you Moses. But I want you to take Joshua. He didn't take away his authority. He said lay your hands on Joshua. Joshua. And prepare him, anoint him. Give him that privilege to enter and to take the people into the promised land. So church tonight, remember, you who are called, whether to be a prophet, whether to be a priest, or a king. Every one of these services here come under the same name as shepherd. If you are a prophet, 
You are sent to minister to God's people. To tell them that say the Lord. If you are a priest, you are here to create that area or avenue of anointing and grace. And if you are a king, you are here to provide for God's people. To make sure that their needs are met. All in all, shepherd. Under one shepherd and in one fool. And that shepherd of the fool is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So may God bless us all. And may God make his face to shine upon us all. And may he give us that peace. Again, I want to say thank you all for being with me tonight. I want to say thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share with you and to ask of you in the name of Jesus to be strong, to be steadfast and unmovable, always abiding in the things of the Lord. I want to thank God for each and every one. It's a good thing to see my sister Jackie here. I haven't seen her for a while. But God bless you. And each and every one that is in line with me. May God make his face to shine upon you. May he give you peace. I'm seeing some new faces here. Monica Ann Williams. Yes. Veronica Toby. Welcome. All of you. Welcome. Regulars. Lon Mother Lorna Harewood. Uh, Captain Donna Cox. You know, Rebecca Sears. We give God praise. And those, you know, that goes up. So you don't see everything here. And I don't want to be scrolling down right now. But I want to thank God for everyone that is in line with me tonight. All God's people. Just remember what he says. All my people. May he bless us all. And make his face to shine upon us all. And give us peace. Good night. One and all. Peace.